This week on Movie Mash, I have taken the characters from one popular author and have put them into a screenplay inspired by another popular author. The Lord of the Rings is directed by Peter Jackson and is based on the epic fantasy written by author and scholar J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien? For this exercise, I will take my inspiration from the movie characters and not the originals from the books. This is because there are many differences between the movies and the books, which will affect my choices to come. With that in mind, here's what Lord of the Rings is about. IMDB says, A meek hobbit from the Shire and eight companions set out on a journey to destroy the powerful One Ring and save Middle-earth from the Dark Lord Sauron. While Frodo and Sam edge close to Mordor with the help of the Shifty Golem, the Divided Fellowship makes a stand against Sauron's new ally Saruman and his hordes of Isengard. Gandalf and Aragorn lead the world of man against Sauron's army to draw his gaze from Frodo and Sam as they approach Mount Doom with the One Ring. They're so cute! Jane Austen's stories explore the British landed gentry at the end of the 18th century and her characters and stories are incredibly relatable still. I've no money and no prospects, so don't judge me, Lizzie. Don't you dare judge me. Who hasn't misjudged someone like Elizabeth or said something really hurtful to a friend like Emma? Badly done, Emma. Badly done indeed. This was badly done. Badly done indeed! <laughs> But JC, how you put Jane Austen's beloved characters into the epic world of Lord of the Rings? Well, have you ever felt like you've seen a character somewhere before? Archetypes allow audiences to immediately recognise and relate to characters without an explanation why, giving the writer a quick point of connection between character and audience. Doing this gives the writer ample amount of screen time to delve into the crux of the story they really, really wish to delve. And turn them all to stone! Before I continue, I want to establish my aesthetics for my Regency Middle Earth. Austen's plots explore the dependence of women on marriage and the pursuit of favourable social standing and economic security, so I want to stay true to that essence. So for funsies, let's say destroying the One Ring means these women can marry for love, but if they don't, there will be an eternity of unfavourable matches for their kind. Let's start with the most obvious archetypes and the characters that fall into them. Broadly speaking, the Joker is fun to be around, is liked by everyone, and is used for comic relief. But at least it's not herpes. Oh dear, I have that as well. However, Jokers can be unreliable in times of need and a constant distraction. <laughs> Who does this sound like? What about second breakfast? Pippin is mischievous and enjoys a good party, but his carelessness causes problems. <laughs> Lydia is the younger sister in Pride and Prejudice. She is reckless and flirtatious and runs off with Mr. Wickham, despite the fact that it could be the social ruin of her family. Lydia does not care about the consequences of her actions. A whole camp full of soldiers. However, I will mention that Pippin does try to atone by pledging himself to Denethor. So it'd be fun to see Lydia try to atone to her sisters somewhere <laughs> on the quest. Just imagining it now. The ruler usually has power and status. They are someone you follow due to their communication and leadership skills. But their motivation is about keeping order in society to maintain their power. You have no style or sense of fashion. I think that depends on what you're- No, no, that wasn't a question. They can be disliked and out of touch with others. Who do we know who's like this? Give Gondor the weapon of the enemy. Let us use it against him. Boromir is the heir to the steward of Gondor. His desire to protect men and to protect his kingdom is what has him fall to the desire of the ring. Oh, could have been mine. Emma is the richest of Austen's heroines with an independent fortune. Intelligent and talented in many pursuits, she is spoilt, meddlesome, and has pride regarding her social status, which means she basically looks down on the poor. Yeah. Just like Boromir is prone to jealousy over Aragorn, Emma clashes with a fellow character, Jane Fairfax. What a pity you did not bring your music. I hope I can recollect the tune. 
So in my version of this mashup, whoever Aragon's equivalent is, Emma will take issue with them due to power or status. These two rulers also share a redemptive arc. Boromir makes up for his error by fighting the oncoming army. And Emma, after hurting a friend, lets go of her pride. It's a happy ending for her, but for Boromir? Ah. Oh. Emma is one of my favorite Austin heroines, but I'm still prepared for her to meet an epic death for this exercise. The caregiver has a big heart. They support others and make selfless acts on their behalf. However, they can lack personal ambition or sacrifice it for others and can value friends and family survival over their own. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? But there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. Samwise Gamgee is Frodo's best friend and is committed as Frodo is to destroying the One Ring and keeping the Shire safe. I can't carry it for you. But, but I, I can't can carry you. you. Jane Bennett is the elder sister in Pride and Prejudice. As much as she would like to marry for love, I believe she understands the importance of marrying well for the sake of her family. Thank the Lord for that. I thought it would never happen. A difference I'd like to acknowledge between the two caregivers is that Sam is not easily deceived by Gollum, whereas Jane is easily fooled by Caroline Bingley. Are we to receive every Bennet in the country? Therefore, I may need to remove Jane's rose-colored glasses earlier in this exercise for her to fulfill a similar purpose that Sam does. This is where things get trickier. Mentors, also known as sages, are wise teachers. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. They ooze wisdom about magic or logic or magic and logic, which can make them hesitant to join in the action or display an unwillingness or inability to solve their own problems. The wizard Gandalf possesses remarkable insight into hobbits, elves, dwarves, other creatures of Middle Earth that I can't remember right now. <laughs> men. <laughs> men! He understands men. <sighs> now, there are many mentor options from Jane Austen's stories, but the one I believe who reflects Gandalf best is Miss Taylor. You, you should be kind to her. Yes, yes, I know. That's just what Miss Taylor keeps telling me. She acts as a surrogate mother to Emma and is also her close friend. When she is married, Emma is of course happy for her, but truly feels the loss of her absence. The relationship between Gandalf and Frodo is sort of like grandfather-grandson, which is why when the characters believe Gandalf has died, Frodo is devastated. Lover leads with their heart, which they wear on their sleeve. <laughs> they are passionate and showcase such conviction and devotion to another that they can neglect their own well-being. Marianne Dashwood is a major character in Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. She's spontaneous, dramatic, and open with her feelings. She gives her heart to Mr. Willoughby with no thought to what others may think. Why should I hide my feelings? They are true and honest. JC, is there really a lover in Fellowship of the Ring? <laughs> Gimli is a axe-wielding warrior dwarf. He is passionate. Why don't you point the air and strike me? Honest. Well, I suppose you think you're the one to do it. And is loyal to the Fellowship and to Aragorn. We're going, We're going with, with you, laddie. The rebel refuses to settle for anything less than what they think they deserve and wants to change the world. They can inspire the masses despite having no power and no clear way forward. We dare to end this hunger for justice! Aragorn is the rightful king of Gondor. He puts himself in harm's way to ensure the Fellowship's survival and for the survival of the elf princess Arwen. By the time he is crowned king, he has proven himself as a noble leader with a pure heart. Anne Elliot is the protagonist of Persuasion. She has an elegance of mind and sweetness of character, but is burdened by family expectations. By the end, she comes into her own and refuses to settle for what others tried to persuade her to do. 
The strain and distance put on Aragon and Arwen is not the same as Anne and Captain Wentworth, but there's some similarities that can be dramatized. So in my story, Anne will take on the armies of Mordor to prove to others and to herself her own determination of mind. Unjust I may have been. Weak and resentful I have been, but never inconstant. I offer myself to you again with a heart even more your own than when you almost broke it eight years ago. Then, because I love a happy ending, we can still share in this cute little moment. This is where things get more complicated. The charismatic and curious explorer is driven to push the boundaries of the status quo. Don't talk to me like I'm an idiot, okay? Okay, look, I think we got off on the wrong foot here. That's all you got, lady. Two wrong feet in f***ing ugly shoes. This is Mary, for sure. He is curious and a troublemaker and easily shows his dissatisfaction and restlessness. But you're part of this world, aren't you? I'm going to pair Mary's explorer with another character trope. The every person. This character lacks special powers and is often unprepared for what's to come. With no past and no future. They are hesitant when it comes to change, but make the best of most situations. Simply, they are a relatable character from daily life. Catherine Kitty Bennett is the fourth sister in Pride and Prejudice. She is a source of embarrassment for the Bennett family, particularly when under the guidance of her sister Lydia. Well, of course she will. She is violently in love with him. <laughs> For heaven's sake, lower your voice. I feel like everybody knows a kitty. Someone who can be weak-spirited and irritable because of their poor choices of friends, career, or romances. With Lydia as Pippin and Kitty as Mary, it means we can lean into the influence one has over the other until that moment they separate. It will allow for Kitty to blossom into her true, powerful self like it is insinuated in the book. Who doesn't want to see Kitty take up arms and help slay the Witch King? Is he gone? The outsider can be a lonely but seemingly decent person. Well, well. They are bitter about their past and about being rejected. Usually out for revenge or to prove themselves worthy of inclusion, they are prepared to sacrifice or betray new friends. I mean, Gollum does seem like he's waiting for the opportune moment to steal the One Ring. Lucky you so. None of Austin's characters I can publicly compare to Gollum. So here's another trope that can provide some crossover. The innocent is a morally pure character whose intentions are good. Full of imagination, hope and kindness, they can be naive to the world and easily taken advantage of. They must learn things the hard way. Ow. Catherine Morland from North Anger Abbey is kind-hearted and a hopeless romantic. She views the world as if it was a novel, proving how gullible and naive she really is. Smeagol's transformation into Gollum serves as a cautionary tale about the evil effects of the ring. In comparison, Catherine's unchecked imagination causes her trouble. Therefore, for this exercise, Catherine's obsession with novels can be redirected to the ring, making her a victim to it. The creator has an inexhaustible drive and willpower. They need to create something palliable or tangible in their world, yet sometimes have an inability to communicate a vision and have alienating perfectionism and single-mindedness. I'm going to electrocute him. Legolas is brave, loyal, and committed to the fellowship. He is competitive, verging on perfectionism. <laughs> His communication is usually selective and guarded. Perhaps it's not an inability to communicate, but just very unique to his elfishness. Elfishness? Elvishness. Eleanor Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility is practical and thoughtful. Her desire is to protect her family and counsel them through their hardships. She often does not communicate her true feelings because she understands society's expectations on women. Would it serve any good for me to be agitated? Should I lie sobbing and calling his name? Look at 
that. The Dashwood sisters are my reserved elf and passionate dwarf. It makes perfect sense because Legolas and Gimli slowly become friends throughout Lord of the Rings, just like Eleanor and Marianne become closer throughout Sense and Sensibility. For this exercise, it'd be awesome to overlay the fact that Eleanor's feelings are just as deep as her sisters, but she can govern them even while wielding a bow and arrow. <laughs> The orphan usually lives a normal life until their circumstances anoints them as the savior. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? I'm not a witch at all. Still, they have empathy for others and command respect. Hail to Dorothy, the wicked witch is dead. Frodo, Frodo. Frodo is thrust into the spotlight when he becomes the ring bearer. He shows pity for Gollum and basically becomes a legend. Now, this Austin heroine is no orphan. And those are the words of a gentleman. Elizabeth Bennet is the protagonist of Pride and Prejudice. She is intelligent and witty and early on in the novel takes pride in her sense of discernment. But what trope is Lizzie B? I think Lizzie, like Mary, is an explorer. She's driven to push the boundaries on the status quo. It is what will give her courage to destroy the ring and destroy her prejudice along with it. So think about your own screenplay. What archetypes do or do you not have and how can you use them to your advantage? Okay, it's time to hear the Lord of the Rings trilogy if Jane Austen characters were in them. Elizabeth Bennet from Longbourn, three of her sisters and five other women set out on a journey to destroy the powerful One Ring and save their choice to marry for love from the Dark Lady Catherine. While Elizabeth and Jane Bennet edge close to Rosings Park with the help of the naive Catherine Morland, the divided fellowship makes a stand against Lady Catherine's new ally Mrs Norris and her hordes of Mansfield Park. Miss Taylor and Anne Elliot lead the world of women against Lady Catherine's army to draw her gaze from Elizabeth and Jane Bennet as they approach Rosings Park with the One Ring. Please hit the like button and subscribe and comment below what character you think Fanny Price should be in Lord of the Rings because I forgot about her even though she's my favorite. Until the next smash, bye! Archetypes are a great, a great, a great way. As much as she would like to marry Beloved, ma marry Beloved? As much as she would like to marry Beloved, as much as she would like to marry Beloved, Beloved? Did it again. To draw his gaze from Frodo and Sam as they approach Mouth, mouth Doom. <laughs> I actually have Mouth Doom written. <laughs>